Hey guys, it is Haley with Six String Country, and in this video, I wanted to give you my top five tips on how to back up a singer. When you're playing guitar, especially lead guitar, playing electric, really 90%-ish of that time can be spent just playing in the background and more playing rhythm guitar. So it's really important to really nail these parts and think about the overall picture of the song and not just what you're gonna do for your solo. I know for me personally, especially when I was first, you know, starting out on guitar, a lot of what I like to practice was just lead lines and solos and fun licks. And then when it came time for me to actually play with a singer in a full band setting, sometimes it was a little bit confusing to think about creative things that I could play when the singer was singing and when there wasn't supposed to be a solo or a lick. So I wanted to cover what you can do in this video. So my first tip is thinking about creative things that you can do that is not noodling when the singer is singing. So a lot of times, especially in a big chorus, just big cowboy chorus, it's totally appropriate to fill things out and just hanging on that chord, doing those diamonds, letting it ring. But in the case that it's a verse, especially like a second verse when you wanna spice things up, I think really thinking about, okay, the bass already has that low end, those big chords maybe, or the big notes, and the drums kind of keeping the time. What can I do to add in this? So I like to think about my guitar sort of being on the highest end of things um, tone-wise. So I might then go to, you know, doing a triad type thing. So maybe I would fill in just kind of doing sparse notes here. Or maybe you might use some intervals and just hang out. of things. So practicing things like intervals and triads and even just interesting chord voicings can be really beneficial when you're in a playing setting at just making things sound a bit more creative and professional than just playing bar chords or open chords. So that is tip number one. Tip number two is really using your tone to your advantage. Um, I think that pickup switches are such a great way to do this, just a little change, especially because if you're anything like me, the idea of using my pickup switch and switching pedals and everything for different parts of the song, it used to feel a little bit overwhelming. So just keeping it really simple by just anything like a pickup switch or maybe you just have a boost pedal or something like that for your big parts can be really beneficial. So I like to, a lot of times, this is obviously not set in stone, but use my neck or middle pickup a lot of times for more of a verse type thing if I don't want my guitar to really pop out of the mix. Obviously it depends on what sort of style you're playing. And then if I'm playing a lead solo, unless it's like bluesy and I want that like neck pickup sound, I will switch it to my bridge pickup and it's just going to make it stick out of the mix a little bit more and draw more attention to your part. So I really like to think about this pickup switch being kind of like a here I am on stage, like look at what I'm doing type thing. I also think, you know, a boost pedal stomping on a second overdrive and thinking about those sorts of things as you're building your pedal board is re really beneficial. So as much as you can do to dynamically create those different parts with your tone and think about it as a big picture, the better off you will be. Tip number three is really thinking about the full picture like you are a producer. So if there is somebody playing a certain part, say, you know, one person's playing quarter notes on bass or something, and the drummer is playing, you know, eighth, eighth notes or something, you might think about just playing a whole note that goes through everything or maybe 16th notes and little things like that are really going to help the overall song sound professional and make you sound like you really know what you're doing when you're listening to that big picture. A lot of times a singer, you know, might not even really recognize what you're doing in that full picture of things, but they're just gonna think, oh, this sounds really good. Like everything's blending really well and sounding fuller. So as much as you can listen to the keyboard player and the bassist and the drummer and think about where you sit in all of that, the better I know this is a little similar to the first tip, but really thinking about timing wise, what you can do that is a little bit different so you're not just copying the parts. 
if you have a rhythm guitarist, this is a really great thing, especially, um, you know, if they're playing just some chords or strumming, you could even play chords, but just thinking about making your notes sound different and fill in space where they are not. Tip number four, this is something I like to do that just really shows that you are accenting the singer and the song is choosing certain vocal riffs and copying it in your solo. So for example, if the singer is singing something like, like a la 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 la, it's doing like a or something like that in the background or like as an echo or incorporate that in your solo. So any things like that that you can do, I always think is really cool if you can harmonize with what they're doing and just add those elements into your fills and solos. I think it just really adds that extra bit of really listening to the song and really coming around the singer and making their idea even better. My last tip is thinking about just any way that you can help the singer stand out and be the star. You know, when we're soloing as guitar players, that's sort of our time to shine. But other than that, I think that the song is really about the words and what the singer's doing and how you can accent that. So there's a couple things that I like to think about. Um, first of all, is making the cues for when you're transitioning from a verse to a chorus really easy for them to follow and making the timing simple. In my experience, you know, there are obviously so many singers that have really great timing, but some singers might struggle with timing a little bit. So as much as you can do to show them, here's where you're going in, if they're not, you know, counting those bars or something, I think that is gonna just make it feel a lot more comfortable playing with you. And another thing that you can do to sort of help out your singer is really making sure that your stage presence is good. I think that most singers, you know, wanna put on a really great show. So as much as you can be really into it and moving around on stage and interacting with them, the more comfortable they're gonna be around stage and interacting with other band members, and interacting with the crowd. So I think that that is sort of an unsaid part about being a guitarist is making sure that your singer does feel comfortable and that you are really helping them out in any way that you can. So I hope that you enjoy these quick tips of just how you can be better at backing up a singer. I know this is something that is easy not to think about, but once you're really conscious of this, it can make a huge difference in your playing in a band. So thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day.